you visit a city for the first time, knowing which are the best neighborhoods to stay in becomes a priority. In today's video we're going to tell you which are the best neighborhoods in Lisbon to look for accommodation, especially if you are visiting the city for the first time. Hola, tudo bem? I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Let's first go to the map to identify the location of Lisbon's main tourist attractions, because this information will help a lot in understanding where it would be best to stay. You will notice that these attractions are fairly concentrated in the city center and in two remote regions at opposite ends of the city. The first of these two faraway regions is Belém. The metro does not reach Belém, which can only be reached by bus or tram. It is a very beautiful district full of lovely places with monuments with a lot of history and a sensational waterfront. The second of these regions is the Parque das Nações, the Park of Nations. It is a very modern district with avant-garde buildings and attractions created in the last decades. It is also a very pleasant place to walk around. Despite being two very interesting regions which we love, we would not recommend staying in either Belém or Parque das Nações if it is your first visit to Lisbon. The time lost traveling to the city center every day would be considerable. Our recommendations for accommodation in Lisbon are all in or around the center of the city, and that is where we are heading. The first region we are going to talk about is the one formed by two adjoining neighborhoods, the Rocío and the Baixa, bordered to the north by the Avenida da Liberdade and to the south by the Praça do Comercio and the Teigus River. It is the most central region of the city and as its name Baixa, low, suggests, it is built in the lower part of central Lisbon, flanked by hills on either side. The Baixa is the old commercial center of the city, today the most touristic region of Lisbon. Among the positive points of staying in the Rocío or Baixa, it is the most central location in Lisbon, there are many points of tourist interest, public transport connections are brilliant, including metro, trams, trains and boats, and there are many hotels of all prices and sizes. Among the negative points, the region is always crowded with people and the endless movement of tourists day and night can be annoying. If this is your first time in Lisbon and you find a hotel that fits your needs in Rocío or Baixa, don't think twice and book it. We now visit Chiado, the neighboring district of Baixa, in an elevated position above Baixa. Among the positive points of staying in Chiado, it is still a central region of Lisbon, it is one of the most elegant neighborhoods, with very traditional shops as well as sophisticated stores. Public transport connections are still quite good, and there is quite a lot of nightlife in and around the neighborhood. And among the negative points, accommodation prices in the region are more expensive and the movement of people day and night can be a nuisance. If you can find a hotel that fits your budget, Chiado is another excellent neighborhood to stay in Lisbon. The Bajo Alto, the high quarter, is right next to Chiado, and as its name suggests, it is in an elevated position. It is the old bohemian quarter of the city and is full of traditional tascas and bars, as well as many nightlife venues. Among the positive points of staying in the Bajo Alto, it is a neighborhood with a lot of traditional flavor and it is one of the best areas for those who want to enjoy Lisbon's nightlife. On the negative side, it doesn't have very good connections with public transport and you have to be very sure you know what the place you are staying in is like to avoid falling into a noisy address at night. The Bajo Alto would be the place we would recommend mainly for the one who wants to have fun at night in Lisbon. Taking Baixa as a reference, the Alfama district is on the opposite side of Chiado and Bajo Alto. In the following description we will include the castle district on the slopes of the castle within the Alfama district. The Alfama neighborhood is one of the oldest in Lisbon and one of the most touristic as well. Although there are a few hotels in the neighborhood, it is home to a large number mainly of flats and rental houses. 
Among the positive points of staying in Alfama, it is a very beautiful neighborhood with an endless succession of delightful corners. And it is a neighborhood with a strong traditional flavor. On the downside, there are endless hills everywhere and public transport is very limited. The metro doesn't run and the tram is often overcrowded. And there are many places where you can't even get there by car. Also, there are a lot of tourists, mainly during the day. We really like the Alfama, but for a first time visitor to Lisbon, it would not be one of our recommendations unless you know where you're going to stay and what the transport in and out of there is like. The accommodation options in the lower part of the Alfama near the Casa dos Picos have a much better location in terms of transport. We now head a little north of Rocío to get to know two other very central regions. The first one is Príncipe Real, one of Lisbon's most exclusive and fashionable neighborhoods, full of charming shops, cafes and restaurants, as well as being more or less the capital's gay district. Mass tourism has not yet arrived here. It has several transport options but a bit more limited than in other neighborhoods we have already mentioned and the main problem in the region is that accommodation prices are quite expensive. The second option is Avenida da Liberdade which starts near the Rocio train station and stretches all the way to Marques de Pombal Square. Avenida da Liberdade is one of Lisbon's most elegant addresses with many luxury hotels, shops, bars and restaurants. A metro line as well as many bus lines runs along it from one end to the other. Among the positive points of staying on Avenida da Liberdade, it is a beautiful avenue with many trees, it has a concentration of hotels of a high standard, and the public transport connections, especially at the end closest to the center, are very good. And the most negative point is that the price level in the region is higher than in other parts of Lisbon. Near Marques de Pombal Square, at the end of the avenue farthest from the center of Lisbon, cheaper prices can be found. Despite the greater distance from the center, it is not a bad location if you don't mind taking a short metro ride to the center every day. Let's go back to the map for a summary of what we've talked about so far. For you, a first-time visitor to Lisbon, accommodation in Rocio or Baixa would put you close to almost everything. Neighboring Chiado would also be a good choice. If nightlife is your priority, look for something in the Bajo Alto. If you want a neighborhood with a lot of flavor and you're very sure of access to the location you're staying in, the Alfama is a delight. Principe Real and Avenida da Liberdade are two very exclusive addresses, while the nearby region of Marques de Pombal Square can offer cheaper prices in exchange for a short metro ride. Does this mean you can't stay in other regions not mentioned in the video? No, far from it. Here we have pointed out the best regions for the first time visitor to Lisbon, but there are other regions that are not bad, far from it, such as the ones near metro stations Campo Pequeno, Saldaña, San Sebastián or Arroyos, four areas quite close to each other where you can find hotels of all prices, traditional hotels and also very modern hotels. If your hotel is not far from the metro and you don't mind traveling by metro every day, a more distant address can justify the savings on the price of accommodation. Have you seen a hotel for a price that fits your budget and want to know our opinion? Leave us your question in the commentary box below, we love to try and help. If you're visiting Lisbon, you'll need to get around the city. You will now see on the screen the video we made explaining what public transport is like in Portugal's capital, an essential guide to help you get around Lisbon. From the metro to the trams, from the funiculars to the boats, it's all in that video and we'll see you in it.